Today is October 22nd, 2008. My name is Mary Maxwell. The reason I'm putting so many videos on tube today is because I have a photographer at my disposal and that will never happen again. But he has just taken me out for a walk in the local cemetery and I have, that gives me the chance to say, I certainly hope that Troy Davis lives to see another beautiful autumn like this next year and many other years instead of crashing away next Monday night. At the end of my last video, I made the remark that David Wilhelm, in my opinion, was killed by government. Well, I feel sure of it, but it doesn't mean it's so, but so. And, and, and I said, I, I didn't say, but I'm now saying, I suspect Chertoff to have been the man who thought that one up, because David is a whistleblower. And we have Stephanie Tubb Jones. She was the head of the House Committee on Ethics until recently. And she died in August. No one has made any fuss over it. But to me, that certainly looks like a whistleblower death. And the method was classical uh, CIA, which is she was in a car, but also had an aneurysm. Perhaps they thought she would go into a tree, which is supposed to happen, but she went into an open field, so didn't die till a day later. Gary Webb, I mentioned earlier, if you look up the congressional hearings with with the Ms. Uh, Maxine Waters, representative from California. And I put Crips there because his revelation was that the Iran-Contra money was buying drugs coming in through California and then being spread by the government through the various gangs across the country. Now, I say with great respect to the McPhail family that I don't know, but it is just possible that their man also was a whistleblower or someone who, that's the person that Troy is accused of killing. I'm just saying there's, there are patterns here. This is my dear friend, Senator Jeannie Ferris in Australia. And she died recently of cancer, ovarian cancer. And in her case, there is the greatest reason to understand that this was a, a job done on her because at her funeral, her husband was prepared to he was a journalist in Canberra. He was, I assume, going to tell hell, and he was killed in a one-car crash on his way, not to the funeral, but a day or so before. Here's to you, Jimmy. Sorry. And then there's Pat Tillman. I'll tell you about that one in a minute. Malcolm X, without doubt, killed by the FBI, who then went on all these years to persecute his six daughters, and I mean persecute, and as they are still persecuting them. Don't ask me why. You know they also persecuted Anita Hill's family after her thing with uh, Clarence Thomas. They then harassed the parents of Anita Hill for a long time. So she said in an interview a couple of years ago. Okay, what about Barbara Jordan? Remember she gave the nomination acceptance speech at Jimmy Carter's, I think, in 76. Then she sort of disappeared from view. She died at age 59 of pneumonia. Nobody dies at 59 of pneumonia. Uh, here is another one that I, I consider these persons to have been done away with by government. Canfield Boone is the only name that I was able to find of the 125 alleged deaths at the Pentagon on 9-11. Only he shows up on the SSDI, the Social Security Death Index, as having actually had a death on that very day. What about the other 124? I don't know. Okay. Because there's nothing like a mother who's angry, this book by Mary Tillman, the mother of Pat, is the most important thing. Well, as I said, in Jeannie Ferris's case, the amazing double death if that doesn't prove it to you, well, that's fine. <laughs> but here's Mrs. Tillman has gone to great effort to know why her husband died by friendly fire in the uh, Afghanistan situation. And here she has found it, although I'm not sure she realizes that she has absolutely 200 pages worth of great in-depth research on what happened. She's got all the autopsy reports, all the cover-up reports, all the emails. But she finally learns, this is the kicker, the kicker, she learns that one of the reports said, oh, I should mention that he, 
Rafi, the young man, was killed, and also an Afghan man who was allied with us, part of our, our team. The Afghan man was shot down first, and then this guy. And one of the army reportings said he, Pat Tillman, oh no, he, the Afghan, was to be south of Corporal Tillman. Was to be? The positioning of the man who would die, he was to be south? Whose decision was that? So there's absolute proof in this book called Boots on the Ground by Dusk that Pat Tillman did not die accidentally, didn't also die as some people have speculated in order to you know, create a patriotic feeling of, oh, he's a wonderful young man, gave up his football career, but gave all he had for his country. It wasn't even that. It was, he was a leader, by the way. Malcolm X, a very great leader, a very brilliant man. Pat Tillman, a superb gentleman, age 26 or 7. I think Malcolm was 40, I'm not sure. I've already said Barbara Jordan, a, a budding great leader at 59. And the rest of the names I gave were, I believe, killed because they were whistleblowers. But these people were killed because they are leaders. You're not allowed to be a Malcolm X good leader, a Pat Tillman good leader, a Barbara Jordan good leader. Isn't that amazing?